the statue of William Wallace, Scotland's greatest ever hero, has stood proud overlooking the Scottish borderland since 1814. Sometimes I think people assume that Wallace spent most of his time in Stirling and the Highlands because two, two of his major battles were up there, weren't they? But not much was written about Wallace during his life. But a great portion of his time, particularly during the Wars of Independence, were spent here in the Scottish borders. That's why the statue was erected in 1814, to commemorate that. All over the borderlands, there are place names, folklore, stories, and even written evidence of Wallace's movement through the Scottish borders north towards Edinburgh, through mainly what was the Ettrick Forest. And what I want to do today is trace some of those movements, particularly later on in Wallace's life, and piece together a map of where he went and where he was. You know, I was really hoping and praying that today was going to be dull, maybe a bit wet and misty and atmospheric, you know, give this video a whole atmosphere. But, as usual, the bloody typical Scottish weather, bright sunshine, bacon warm, never fails. was probably the most famous, the most talked about and probably the most debated incident involving Wallace in the Scottish borders, I believe happened near here at St Mary's Loch. The incident I'm talking about is of course Wallace being proclaimed the Guardian of Scotland at a ceremony and what Blind Harry describes as the Forest Kirk. But the debate is, where is the Forest Kirk? Well, for me, the Forest Kirk is St Mary's Kirkyard down here at St Mary's Loch. So let's go and see if we can find the remains of St Mary's Kirk, because the church no longer survives as a church. There are a few churches in the south of Scotland which claim the title of the Kirk of the Forest. Not least the one in the old Kirk in the centre of Selkirk. And the Selkirk Tourist Board and Chamber of Trade all seem quite convinced that that's it. But for me this one has far better credentials. It's far more isolated. The church in Selkirk was right next to Selkirk Castle, which half the time was occupied by English garrisons. So for me, this is far more likely to have been the position or the place of the Kirk of the Forest where Wallace was proclaimed the Guardian of Scotland in 1296. Yeah, some of these old gravestones are Really, really old, in 1600s. <sighs> After Wallace was made the guardian of Scotland down here in roughly 1296, 97, he went on to a crushing defeat at the Battle of Falkirk. After that, Wallace became a bit of a shadowy figure in the history books. He kind of disappeared down here into the Ettrick Forest and the southern upland hills, a place of solitude, I suppose, and hiding. And he 
easy access to the English border where you can mount attacks on the English as well as defending from the English attacking Scotland up here too. But written records and real historical fact are quite hard to come by for this period. But, but, there are lots, there are lots of clues everywhere. Very much left on St Mary's Kirkyard at all, just a few stumpy old graves and an old ash tree, I think it is, I'm not sure if it's an ash or an oak, but I think it's an ash, an ash tree. It's such a wonderful setting up here, looking down on the loch, so peaceful and gorgeous, you know, really fantastic. But this, this is where Wallace was proclaimed the Guardian of Scotland, but what else did he do in the Scottish borders? Doesn't really feel like much, does it? But there are, like I said, clues everywhere. There are things like Wallace's putting stone near Gallish Hills. There's also writings by Blind Harry in his book The Wallace about Wallace and a skirmish on Gala Hill near Gallish Hills. And then you look further into the maps and the history and other things begin to emerge. There is, for example, rather near here at the Games Hope Valley, an old castle ruin, which was a supposedly William Wallace's castle. And just near there, across the Minch Moor towards Traquair, is what's known as Wallace's Trench. So really, in this area, there's a whole line of geographical features and tales linking Wallace to the area. So I really do believe that he was down here. But what I want to do today is go a bit further north towards the Peebles area and just south of Edinburgh and see what Wallace was up to in the final days or the final years of his life, because there are clues everywhere. At some point, probably in around 1303, William Wallace must have travelled north out of the Scottish borders via the Peebleshire Hills to this area, Roslyn Glen, just south of Edinburgh, because there's a feature somewhere in this really deep gorge in Woodland called Wallace's Cave. And legend has it, it's where William Wallace and his men hid out. But why and when? And is the cave still in existence? Can we still reach it? just see the outline of Roslyn Castle over there in the forest. It's a bit obscured by the trees, but I think from this side, the size and scale of that castle hits you a lot more than what it does when you're standing right next to it. Yeah, Roslyn Glen here is one of these places that's full of little nooks and crannies and cliffs and little burns everywhere and Wallace's cave is kind of, it's marked on all the maps and it's well known but it's not very easy to find I can tell you. Scottish hero has a cave, don't they? But why? Why did William Wallace have a cave here in Roslyn Glen? 
Well, you see, in 1303, there was a battle here. A battle which is debatable in size, but some people say it was one of the biggest battles in Scottish history. The forces of England, under the command of Sir John Seagrave, had moved into Scotland to attack. But John Comwin's Scottish army lay for wait for them here in Roslyn Glen. And a huge battle ensued in which the Scots were victorious and Seagrave was sent back in. Now William Wallace is never really mentioned in that battle, but it's unthinkable that he wasn't here. And my theory is that he was here. And this cave was where him and his army of men hid out. But where is the cave? And I'm pretty sure it's in this area right down here. Now it's very steep. Very kind of steep and, and, and probably quite dangerous to get down here, so I wouldn't advise it unless you're, uh, you know, prepared to die. <laughs> yeah, there's been so much rain here and, you know, the ground's just fallen away on that cliff there, so I'm thinking perhaps there's a another walkway, right? A longer way around somehow or other. Let's have a look along here. I've managed to find a walkway here on a lower level which is hopefully going to bring me out of that cave along at the end there rather than scaling the cliff. Now this really is a dangerous place, it's a sheer drop down to a raging river and it's pure rock so you really, you know, it's not a place to be mucking about. came to a dead end at this side as well. Bless. Nah, I'm not getting down there. But we need to go back and rappel down that cliff with no ropes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the cave entrance right there, so I'm going to have to just get down this bank and begin to see why why Wallace chose this site. It's completely inaccessible almost. You have to remember at this point, Wallace was an outlaw. He was the most wanted man in the UK. The whole English army was after him and probably knew what he looked like. He was such a massive figure. This was after the Battle of Stirling, remember? The Battle of Falkirk. Wallace had inflicted so much damage on Edward I and his English troops. That he really was a big time fugitive. And you can understand why he went to such great lengths to stay hidden and undercover as this cave here. Okay, just risked my life to climb down that cliff. I'm absolutely covered in mud. I'm hanging by a tree root. <laughs> and that's not it. It's not even a cave. Shit. I kind of thought it might be a little bit easier to access than what that was. Hey ho, that was an adventure anyway. Let's go further into the glen and see what we can find. You know, walking alone through this forest and gorge looking for William Wallace's cave. You can feel, feel the ghosts of the past all around you. I can almost hear William Wallace's voice. You know, Wallace was a brave man, a man of principle, a man who devoted his life to the freedom of Scotland. But even at this point, a year before he was captured by the English, he must have known, he must have been scared, he must have known that the walls were closing in on him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track now. Just to cross this little burn here, and it takes me to a cliff down there, which is literally about 100 metres above the, the riverbed, which I think is great. Potential for cave tent. It's just so muddy and boggy everywhere just now. And I keep thinking there are little paths shooting off down the riverside. But part of me thinks it must be more obvious than that. Yeah, I've made it to this point now. A little man-hewn ledge right on the edge of this cliff. It must be 150 metres down to the riverbed down there. But 
there are stairs. <laughs> stairs hewn out of the rock. Here's me clambering up and down muddy hillsides, risking my life. There are stairs. <laughs> Yeah, the path's pretty tight here. You do need to be careful. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Shit, this is it, this is it. This is it. Wow. My God. Ooh. Yeah, this is it, all right. Wow. My God, it's actually quite big. Yeah, it did get 70 men in here right enough. Wow. Lots of almost like different cavernous bedrooms in it. Wow. Yeah, you would have got something in there here, no bother. Amazing. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. And then you can see when you exit the tiny little door here. You really are on top of the world. Anybody would be lucky, extremely lucky to find Wallace in here. I think there must have been some kind of door or gate on there at some point. You can see where the rock's been hewn out for a hinge. Yeah, might just stay here tonight. So there it is, William Wallace's cave. Now some people might say that's a load of rubbish. William Wallace was never there. Every hero's got a cave, blah, 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 blah. But I think there's truth in this. You know, this place has been called Wallace's cave for centuries. Why? It wasn't a tourist attraction back in the 14 and 1500s, you know. I really do believe that Wallace was here and it fits in nicely with his movements through the Scottish borders and further north, out of the Ettrick Forest towards Edinburgh. This was 1303, the Battle of Roslyn. 1304, the following year, was another fateful year for Wallace and it was a year that's been recorded in the history books and he was back down in the borders not far from here. After the Scottish victory at Roslyn, Wallace and his band of men moved back south here to the Scottish borders on the Ettrick Forest and specifically to this area here around the modern day town of Peebles. But it was a little bit further upstream from Peebles that the next event in history happened and that's where I'm heading just now. Yeah, I'm about three miles upstream now on the River Tweed from the town of Peebles. And this is a little, not even a village, just a farm nowadays known as Hapru. But this was the site of one of Wallace's last ever battles. In the Battle of Hapru happened right here 
on this site next to the River Tweed in 1304. Almost a year after the Battle of Roslyn when Wallace was hiding out in Wallace's cave. He must have retreated from Roslyn back down into this now Peeblesshire countryside and the hills and valleys that surround here would have made great refuge and hideout for him. By 1304, Wallace was most definitely the most wanted man in the UK. King Edward would put any price on his head. And in that year, Edward got word that Wallace was hiding out in this area. So he sent a big consignment of soldiers down here to hunt down Wallace. They were led by Sir John Seagrave, the man who was defeated at Roslyn a year earlier and almost disgraced at that battle. So he really wanted to redeem himself and capturing Wallace was the ultimate prize. Yes, Seagrave's contingent of men that day contained lots of notable English lords and knights, some real battle-hardened men, all there for the distinct purpose of catching William Wallace. But one other person in Seagrave's army of men that day was none other than Robert the Bruce, future King of Scotland, was in Seagrave's army to catch William Wallace that day here. What was going through the Bruce's head? Who knows? Anyway, the battle ensued here that day in February 1304 at Hapru. The English forces were far stronger, far larger in numbers and the Scots were well and truly defeated. But unfortunately for Sir John Seagrave, William Wallace got away. He got away scot-free. The main objective of the attack had failed, Wallace was free again. But by that time Wallace must have known, must have known that his days were always numbered. You know, a year later is really the next time we hear of William Wallace and it's when he was betrayed by a fellow Scotsman and sold to the English and then treacherously murdered by King Edward in London. Yeah, the Battle of Hapru here is, it's little known, you know, it's probably more of a skirmish than a battle, but it's quite profound to think that William Wallace was living here around Peebles and was involved with a battle against the English here too, and nobody talks about it. There's simply no memorial here or anything like that, you know. It's a, a forgotten, a forgotten piece of Scottish history. Mm. William Wallace and the Scottish Borders. A story maybe not written so much in the history books, but certainly written in the landscape and the oral traditions of the people and the places around the Scottish Borders in the south of Scotland. Why not follow the trail yourself? Because there are hundreds more places than the ones I've went to today. 